Hang all the mistletoe, I'm gonna get to know you better. This Christmas, and as we trim the tree, how much fun is gonna be together. This Christmas, the fireside is blazing bright. We're caroling through the night. And this Christmas, it will be a very special Christmas for me, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Shake my hand, shake my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you love me? Yes. Oh, that puts a tingle in my spine. Me too. So we gonna let's go to set this off for the hood folks. Let's go to do this Q and A and set it off for the hood folks. Let's talk about this, that, and that, and them. Drop the intro. <laughs> That be hood folks. Who we are? Hood folks. Who we do it for? Do it for the hood folks. Who that be hood folks? Who we are? Hood folks. Who we do it for? Do it for the hood folks. 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 Yeah, yeah. What's up, Hoodful? This is Jeremy. And this is Rashad. So we're sitting here drinking hot cocoa. I'm not drinking hot cocoa. I'm drinking eggnog with some uh, rum. You bastard. I thought you were drinking hot cocoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're going to leave me all out here shitting by myself? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we put in the community tab a couple of days ago. Ask us questions, Q&A, 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 and we're going to answer your questions, especially all our new hood folks. Shout out to all y'all that have been with us, with us from the beginning, me from the beginning, this channel from the beginning, and all the new people. Shout out to everybody. But we're going to do our Q&A. Now, one disclaimer. If you don't like real, honest, and transparency, <laughs> transparency, what is it? Trans transparency. <laughs> and a lot of cussing and joking, click off now. This ain't the channel for you. I'm to give you fair disclaimer. Plus, if you get in the comments with who it can be me, we gonna make it you by blocking you. Other than that, everybody else, let's have some fun. All right, so let's get this Q and A started. <laughs> so the first question is, what are y'all favorite songs right now? You're my only love, my only only love is you. Michelle Williams, My Own Love Is You. That song came out 20 years ago. I listen to that song every day. When I did my Spotify Top Songs of the Year, that song from 2004 was my number one song. I played that song over 350 times. I don't like no R&B out today. I can listen to some people, but nobody sing like they've been to church no more. These people, I don't see them giving no tribute, no gospel tribute, no R&B tribute. You know how they do, them, do the award shows wow. and they get a tribute? The Saint comes, you know, like Patty LaBelle, then they bring Fantasia, they do all the hollering. I don't see nobody out today hollering and kissing the Holy Ghost. These people gonna make me turn into an atheist. Okay, I don't like no song out today, but that's my own, that's my favorite song out there. <laughs> all right, so if we're going off of Spotify songs, what was my number one Spotify song? Embar embarrassing. As a man, I'm telling you straight up, this is straight embarrassing. <laughs> my, oh, if we, we, we're we talking about Spotify, I'm, I'm gonna tell you my real song. But Spotify was, uh, Simply for the strippers by uh, Sexy Red and uh, Juicy, Juicy J. J. <clears throat> but to all honesty, my favorite song that I listen to a lot as well is Somebody Loves You. Who? Patty LaBelle. Somebody Loves You, Baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, Fatty LaBelle. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's my favorite song right there. <clears throat> All right, so next, I just want to say y'all are my favorite. Jeremy, you uh, be having me tripping. My question is to both of you. Is that say that? I don't know. I ain't got no spit. Yeah, so. my question to you both is: Did y'all parents accept y'all uh, right away, or was 
they resentful. Of uh, except who right away? Like our lifestyle. Like me except and you. me, my mom accept my lifestyle. Like me and you, I guess that's what it's saying. Do y'all parents accept y'all? My mama so I'm, is. I'm, I'm guessing that they might mean. My mama, I'm gonna tell you this, my parents. Well, my mama is not a fan of my lifestyle. She tell me straight to my face, it ain't her thing. It ain't for her, and I appreciate that. Most people would say I should cut my mama off because she don't support my lifestyle, which is wrong. I respect people who tell me straight to my face how they really feel so they let me know where we stand. So if anything that me and him doing together as a couple, I don't really share that with my mama for real. Or people in my family who is not, you know, they didn't do like January the 5th. So everybody else in my family, just another whatever day. But to me, January the 5th is the day we became a couple. So we gonna celebrate that on January the 5th. So if people in your family don't accept your lifestyle, whatever it is, it don't have to be this sexuality stuff, whatever it is, you just still love them and you just don't tell them about that part of your life, if that makes sense. Okay. I think that makes sense because you want somebody to be upfront with you. Right. Um, me personally, um, my mother, I, I believe she accepts it. Uh, she, you know, she said, I, you know, of course, when you come out with, to your parents, if anybody watching this that ever came out to your parents, they always say, I, I kind of figured, and I still love you, you know, and my mother, my mother don't treat me any differently. Like, we'll go to her house sometimes, and she, he'll come in and, hey, Jeremy, you want me to fix you a plate? If she's cooking and everything like that, and they'll just say, especially my, my you know, my uncles, my uncles, they cool with them. They they hang around his ass. They always trying to get him drunk every time we go home. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, they real cool with him. So I, I believe my mama accept. I mean, if she doesn't and she just, you know, kind of put on the front, I mean, that's, you know, her prerogative. I'm not saying that's what she's doing. But, you know, she accept me. She don't tell me anything different in my face. All right, next question is uh, from Cali Butterfly Diva. How do you both deal with introvert, extrovert personalities? Jeremy, you seem so much like me. You don't mind going out, but your peace is at home and to yourself. Rashad, your personality seems more toward going and being social, but you also don't mind being home. How do you both envision the future and will there possibly be any roadblocks ahead? Um, I really am a introvert. Most people think between us two, especially from YouTube, y'all think I talk the most, I cut up the most. No. If me and him was going to a room of people and somebody started doing small talk, I'm... Yep. He just... <laughs> don't like, talk to like he ignores me. He tries <laughs> like, to ignore him. No. Like, okay, I don't want to talk right now. So me, I, I like my therapist told me, with me being an introvert, I can deal with people that I can relate to. So with us as a couple, it it balances each other off. So I'm more keep to myself, mind my business. He's more sociable. Yeah, me. Uh, like when I go out and uh, like say we at a party or we even at the club. The funny thing is, people approach him more, but he don't like talking. I like to talk, you know. And you know, I just be talking about what's going on in the. In a room and how y'all night going? It's, I don't max. How the weather is today? <laughs> now that's the only thing that I don't like. Like motherfucker, you know what the weather is like? It's like a storm. It, it's a storm outside. It's cold. Like Gail had opened her legs and that wind just blowing out. Who is Gail? You know how they say the Gail winds? It's like real high winds that I just bust blow through. I ain't never heard of that Gail. <laughs> the only Gail I know was. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, and then, but it also, when we be out at the club, though, I think more people approach me because if I'm buzzed up and low-key drunk, y'all, I'm so loud. Ah! Loud. And I be hyping folks up and stuff, but that's all I want to do, hype you up so you can have a good time. After you have a good time, don't come around me. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. Don't talk. Okay. But yeah, that's me. <laughs> Next question is from Yaya's Catering. I love y'all transparency and realness. My question is, what age uh, or when did y'all realize you were attracted to the opposite sex? I think she meant the same sex. Um, and how was it coming out to family and friends? Well, with me, personally, I noticed that I was in men when I was in, i say probably high school. Uh, too many locker rooms. <laughs> but nah, seriously. Um, it, it's like, I... I, I you know, I glanced and I kind of started getting curious about it. But in actuality, I'm still into women as well. So it's just like, you know, you want to 
dib and dab a little bit. Um, but yeah, I say it was around when I was like 16. I say about 16 when I just started thinking about, you know, how it would be to, you know, with a man or whatever. And just looking at underclothes and back ends. So, um, yeah. What? Oh, like Lady Gaga said, I was born this way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is my honest opinion. I don't believe I was born this way. I believe it's what I saw growing up, straight up. But um, I knew for us dudes, when I was younger, and I would always like to go to Walmart, and my mom was like, you don't, go get some, go get some. And I always found myself in the underwear department, looking at under shorts, and I used to be like, and I'm gonna tell you the weirdest thing. Somebody might know what this is, and some people, I remember watching the movie Roger Rabbit. What year Roger Rabbit came out? Ooh, 90s, early 90s. Early 90s. When Roger Rabbit was in a desk, he somebody opened, one of the characters opened a desk, and Roger Rabbit kissed him in the mouth, I had to be about nine or eight, and I was like, mm, I wonder why he kissed him in the mouth. And ain't that too being that just being honest? That's being transparent. Yeah, women! Oh! This, this women, got, women, women, women. Oh, getting ready to not think about Latoya. Latoya Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Christmas last. <laughs> Oh, he just keep walking. I know he a hater. Family. He want. I should put him outside. Sit down somewhere, big boy. Sit, Sit bossy. See, he gonna knock all the camera down. Sit. Good boy. All right. Next question is from Unique Beauty. Jeremy, can you do more funny story times or both of y'all? Uh, I had to watch my story times. I'm from Alabama. People think I'm from Texas, but I'm not. I'm from Alabama, and ironically. A lot of people from Alabama from who know me personally, like know my mama where she work at, know, know me personally, watch my YouTube. So I had to be very cautious with my story times. And I do talk too much on YouTube. I tell y'all too much, especially when I'm drunk. So if I find a story, of a, if I think of something that happened in my past that I can get away with telling y'all without saying names or certain things, yes. But other than that, I do. Uh. <laughs> Cause you know I told y'all, I can kick somebody in the face with some boots on. They're going to pray my strength. The Lord going to take care of me, whatever. They might even put the police on me. But if I get online and talk about people, I got to go home with security. I got to go back to Dallas with security because people are going to be looking for me, which is weird, ain't it? Yep. Talk about people. Beat up. Beat them up yourself. They praying for you like that. Just, that's strange, ain't it? Yeah, you said that in the last video. I did. <laughs> I'm repetitive. I don't see how Rashad deal with Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. Next video is from Mag uh, Delaney Mary. Also, Jeremy, can you sing this Christmas? Let I just, just sung it on the intro. Yeah, I just sung <laughs> it. All right, this one is from Chocolate 50. Hello, hood folks. I love watching y'all do videos. Uh, they just make my day. Laughing is good for the soul, and y'all take uh, stay making me laugh. My question is, have y'all considered having kids one day? Yes. Uh, like we told y'all before, um, we are, you know, we are fertile. What the hell that mean? I thought women be fertile. Oh, yeah, well, you know, our, our, our sacks are ready. Full. Well, no, right now, they empty right now. <laughs> Other than, yes, <laughs> two hours ago. Full. Hey, 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 hey. I was finna run out. I was just finna say full of life. Okay, okay. Now, life support, dead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, idiot. Ooh, shit. We are licensed foster parents as well. Right. So, we have, we, we have options um, as far as the kids. But, yes, we are thinking about having a kid or two or three or four. Yeah, and let me throw a couple of jabs in. That's why y'all see in our video videos, you see that we got the fire extinguisher right here. We got, cause somebody said they got a fire extinguisher. They rent that house. Like, I wish we were renting this bitch. I can move out this weekend, but. but and the lease. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, we got that. That's why we keep the knives on top of the refrigerator. We got childproof all over this place because we are lost, licensed foster parents, but. We'll do the we'll do a whole nother video talking about this, how the foster care system in Houston, trash, trash, trash. They don't care nothing about no kids. <clears throat> I'll leave it at that. We're gonna keep it friendly. Next question. All right, next question is from Tevin McKimble. He says, hello uh, there, Jeremy and Rashad. 
Question, who cleans up around the house the most? Also, does having a dog make y'all house smell bad? Ooh, you better not be talking about my house, man. I'll come up on you, ride up on you, little dude. You don't know me. Time to do some house smell bad. How your house smell? Get your house in order. I'll just play. God. <laughs> Got them scared. They were scared. They're like, oh, I'm scared of that boy. Um, kitchen, bathroom, washing clothes, and mopping the floors. That's really my thing. I clean up everywhere else. Don't say everywhere else, die. Everywhere else that need to be cleaned, uh, I clean it up. The living room, I vacuum, I clean the bedroom, I fold clothes because somebody too lazy to fold clothes. You Get out of here. Them, Get out of here. But you can't freaking fold them. But the house does not stink. If you can see right here, we have a wax melt. We have a wax melt here, wax melt in the other room. We air got purifier. Air purifier right here. And he keeps it, he washes the dog often. And we vacuum in here so it does not stink. So if you come to our house, you the kitchen gonna be clean, the bathroom gonna be clean, and it's gonna smell good in here. Now if you go to our bedroom, clothes everywhere, I don't care. Not everywhere, just in areas where they uh where we don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah, nah, but, uh, I'm not gonna say his name because he's gonna run over here. He sure is. But yeah, he doesn't make the house smell. Um, and uh, he just, the only thing is is that, you know, I have vacuum every like two times a week because his hair. Yeah, he's too happy. Nah, he, he sheds, sheds too a lot. Mm. He, he sheds. And that's nasty. <clears throat> All right, April Airy says, Hey, Jeremy and Rashad. What's I up? was born by the river when I was dry. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was born and raised in Alabama. I grew up like many from the uh, South in the Baptist church. But a few years ago, I left organized religion and started seeking a personal relationship with their creator. During this time, I've heard that the U.S. is considered Babylon and great destruction is supposed to come. What are your thoughts about this? I know religious is a touchy subject, but I would like to hear your opinion. Mm -hmm. This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine, oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna, I'm just playing, oh, uh, listen, I gave up religion, and you will believe that, you, I might as well wear a sign on my head that says 666, Antichrist, whatever, I, I, no, 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 um, I don't do religion no more because my most depressing, saddest time, for real, for real, is when I was in church. When I was going to church a lot, singing in a lot of choir, which I, st I still do miss singing in the choir. I miss that. But when I was going to church a lot, especially from like 2002 to 2005, them years, oh my God, the most depressing. But once I got rid of religion, rules, because religion don't do nothing but separate people. And I just got a relationship with God personally, and I pray to God for myself. I feel better. I think the whole world is Babylon. The whole world is falling apart. But I don't think we're living in the last days because people say, we're living in the last days, but what new is under the sun? Nothing. Everything that's happening today has been happening 100 years ago, 20 years ago, five years ago, whatever. It's just that we have technology, phones, more exposure to stuff, to know stuff. So I, I just think the, the world we were 100 years ago is still the same thing happening now. If we had camera phones and stuff during slavery, you'd be like, whoa. Just imagine this. I'm going to make this real simple. Imagine if you were nine months pregnant, right? And you were married, right? You was pregnant, right? And your husband did something foul to somebody. And they couldn't get your husband. And they came into your house and snatched you out of your house and drug you by your hair downtown to the middle of the town square. And they hung you and they took a knife in your stomach and just janked your stomach open and made your baby fall on the ground, stumped him to death. And you laid on a tree and you just died on hanging from a tree. And then they took your baby and throwed it to an alligator and they ate it. And the alligators ate your kid. And then the people who saw this applaud that person for doing it to you. That person don't go to jail. That person doesn't go nothing. And they still live long. Which is worse, which is worse, a death happening during slavery time or stuff that happened today? You see what I'm saying? So I don't, that's just how my mind thinks. Okay, let me get back funny because I don't want to be too serious. All right, well, I'm not <laughs> going to counter that. That's, uh, man, you pretty much laid it out there. Next question is from Aries. Uh, Rashad and Jeremy, what are two things on your bucket list if you could uh, if you could do 
or have right now. Also, do you see uh, you all having a child or children within the next five years? Okay, we answered that second part. So what are the two things on your bucket list? I mean, it's not a bucket list. It's just that the next step I want to do, I want to write books, movies, scripts, ideas, what to write. And I still want to record an album. And I want it to be R&B. And I don't want it to be no old man song. I want it to sound like music of today, like the music itself. But the vocals, I want it to be like I sung in church, you know. I want to be. I want to record. That's what. Like, I, tell me what's your favorite position? <laughs> that's on twenty years old. <laughs> what about you? Uh, my bucket list. I say we'll actually, you know, fly on a plane again. <clears throat> because as y'all know, I'm scared to fly. I mean, what's the worst could happen? You could crash, and if you crash, you're gonna see Jesus. Don't you want to see Jesus? I not want this to early. See. <laughs> <God> <laughs> See, that is another reason why I do not like. Because he watch a lot of the airplane crashing videos and stuff. And I just think about it. And he said, oh, no. it's, Earl, it's, it's Technology is better nowadays. Ain't nobody going to crash. That's a damn lie. Because guess who driving? How do you, you trust the motherfucker that's driving? You don't know him and you trust him? Well, you trust the person that just made your subway sandwich and you don't know Dion. Well, I didn't trust him too much. But, I mean, technology has changed, you know. It ain't like it used to be years ago. Well, I don't know. But that's one of them. And another one is to be able to own a big-ass piece of land in a country that's mine. And I can do any and everything to it. I mean, you can say, oh, you got a house. But you still got to go to... For one, you got to go to the HOA, if you have an HOA, and right. see if it's okay. And then you got to go to the city, make sure the city allows you to do whatever you want to do to your own land. So it's just like, I'd rather have a big-ass piece of land out in the country, gate it off, and do whatever the hell I please, and live a good, long life. That's what's up. <laughs> Next one is from Mag Delaney Mary again. I love y'all all the great content and I have been a subscriber for a long time. The question is, I have an audio book and would love to get a review from you two. I'm looking for multiple reviewers and uh, honest feedback. I'm not a YouTuber, but I watch YouTube and would like to get a review from Rashad and Jeremy. I'll uh, provide a free copy, please. All right, we'll put it in the comments of this video and y'all check out her uh, book. I, what kind of book is it too? Put it in the comments and tell us what type of book it is. Now, I don't like, if I read a book, I honestly, I, I like to read mystery, suspense, thrillers. Now, I don't like romantic books and I damn sure help, hate self-help books and I don't like comedy books. And uh, just make sure he has pictures in it. What you trying to say? <laughs> but yeah, drop your, in, in the comments, put your book, it, your, your book, what it's about, and let us know, and y'all check her book out, and I'll check it out too for real. For real. I really would. I really would. I'm not just saying something to say something. I yeah, so let's do that. And, or you can email it. Yeah. Email it to us. All right, this is from Crystal Jackson. I, I'm i new to the channel. How did y'all meet, and how long have y'all been together? Drop it in all the way from Waco, Texas. I love y'all. Waco. Ain't that where all uh, Fat Ho Burgers or something? Something like that. Yeah. 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 I want to go to Waco, take, go to that place, Fat Ho Burger. Well, me and Rashad met on Jack. Um, I sent him a picture of my thing, and he was infatuated. Couldn't get rid of him. He said, that's Alabama. I can't get rid of him. And I was married to a woman at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. That's sarcasm. I like sarcasm, but most people don't like sarcasm. They really like, oh, oh no, that ain't what you would. Anyway, but go. We met on uh, OCD. I mean, <laughs> OCD. What OCD? You we met about? on MySpace. Yes. Um, 2007. Around this time in 2007. Yeah, yeah, it was around this time. Maybe a little earlier because mm -hmm. I think you were going home for Thanksgiving at that time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so. Um, yeah, we met there, and we've been together for almost 16 years next month. January the 5th. January 5th, 2024. Damn, that's a long time. 2024? I know. I remember when it was 2004. Damn, I'm sorry, 2004. Oh Ruben stuttering. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> uh, this is from Millie Garcia. Rashad, does Jeremy having OCD ever make it harder on your relationship? I can say this at first, yes, it was very hard because this guy can be bipolar. I'm not bipolar. He overthinks. Yeah. And it's just like. What did that squeeze there? 
<laughs> about you hollering? <laughs> it's hollering for dear life. <laughs> okay. But uh, but as I done been with him for a while, I done got used to it and I know what to expect. Um, it still get on my nerves and I be wanting to slap him, but I don't say nothing because I try to keep keep it peaceful with him because I know how he is. I ain't got nothing to say. You want a joke? I just gave a joke. I ain't got nothing. I got to think of something now. <laughs> the next question is from Crybaby Hoochie. <laughs> How did y'all work through the infidelities from the past? And do you feel your relationship is stronger? Ooh, Rashad. Y'all know Rashad was fire. If you got... I'm just bobbing. Um, to be straight up, honest... Honest. Is that the word? Honest. Honest. Uh, it was... Bad in the beginning. We went through a hard time of issues and hands and whatever. And then when it comes to that, you just talk about it. You go through your anger. You realize do you want to stay or go. And when you figure out what you want to do, when they beg, if loving you is a crime. <laughs> and you work it out and you figure, this is it worth it? Is it worth it? If not, I will say, if the relationship, it ain't that our relationship got weak during that. It still stayed the same. We're just like, the same, the same. What is this? Uh-uh. Then, you know, and it's like, after we talked about everything and, and yapped it out and said what we're going to say, everything's back cool. Now, it can't be back cool. And no, we do not be faking for YouTube. If we is into it, if we have an issue, I wouldn't do a YouTube video with him. That's straight up. So, everything is, is copacetic. Is that a word? Copacetic. But... <laughs> I'm just helping you out. See, I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. You want to hear that back then? Which I was just playing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you this, though. I do be messing. I do, yeah, I do, try to, I do throw jokes in your face like, oh, yeah, that what happened then? <laughs> very, very messy. But it took me, I ain't gonna, one other thing. It did take me a minute to get over it, but now, 2023, all about Jeremy. Look at that ride. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is from Grand Manifesto. I'm a new subscriber, but I believe I heard in one of your videos that y'all will have been together for 15 years. Congrats on that. That's beautiful. Thank you. I want to know what has been the glue that keeps y'all together. Um, what I always tell people in relationships is people be. I watch a lot of dating shows. And when I hear people say, this is what I want in a relationship, it always be like, that's so goofy. The number one thing I always tell y'all on Instagram and I always say is, when you meet somebody, do you like them? Mm. That's the number, money, looks, sex, all that stuff will play out. You'll get somebody and they tore your back out or they drain your balls so good. <laughs> After that's over with, what else y'all got in common? Like, ooh, we did it good. And the sex ain't gonna be 24 right. seven. So what about when the sex over with? And the vacations and the trips and the money over with, not just a regular Tuesday, and we gotta be around each other. Do we like each other? We like each other. You like me? I like you. But yeah, I, I agree with you about that. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell was that? Bro, I'm just chilling, man. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. In the cut me and my hot chocolate. Cold chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um <clears throat> it all depends. It, it it what he said. Um, a lot of folks, they, they look at the wrong things when it comes to trying to find someone. And, um, I mean, and, um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> he was a broke bum when I met him. Had a fake-ass Mercedes, end up in a, uh, what was it? A La Sabre, a Buick La Sabre. Oh, God, with them ugly-ass velvet seats. They were red. <laughs> I'm playing, okay. <laughs> I'm playing with you. I'm playing with you. But anyway, um, but yeah, so you got to look past that. And I look past uh, a lot of things with him. Like when he first came in, I think I told y'all this story. When he first came and picked me up, he was bouncing in there like a queen. I mean, like I thought he was the queen of the South for real. Man, you Had on his blue, all his blue. He bouncing coming in, had that tongue ring. Got... I said, oh my gosh. I thought he was masculine. I said, man, I but am masculine. Now uh, you are. After I realized it, but how you was bouncing into the uh, to the, uh, well, the terminal? You thought I was coming in there smiling, but I actually was laughing at them little felines you had on. Them little felines were leaning, leaning. This old building 
Keep on leaning. I gotta move to a better home. When I walked through the door and I saw you and I saw them shoes, the leaning tower or whatever building. Pizza. Yeah. Them the shoes were lean, I'm telling you. <laughs> them shoes were broke ankle, broke wrist. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, it, I would leave it. See, I you thought I was coming that bouncing around. I would leave it in them shoes. I said, now if I had to lean on me when you're not strong. Okay, we are gonna quit okay. with the jokes. <laughs> we are gonna quit with the jokes. All right, so yeah, so um, they were leaning, but anyway, no shoe had no book bag, <laughs> no Caleb blue book bag. Okay, um, the structure was crumbling. I'm the, the foundation was moving. <laughs> I saw cracks. <laughs> ah! But anyway, so the next question is, is from Crystal. She said, are we getting a Christmas dinner vlog? No. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, nah. No, no ma'am. All right, the next one's from Allison Joy Joyelle. Do you think you will ever do weight loss surgery again, Jeremy? I'm not saying that you need it, just curious. Would you ever get a cat as a... Okay, I'll read that next one, but what what would you say about that one? What you trying to say I'm fat? That's what it sounded like. She was she was saying that you was fat. And she said that whatever you doing ain't working. That's what she. That's what I'm getting from the comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. No, I would never do regular like surgery again. Uh, if I can go back to 2011... And when I was going through the options of getting weight loss surge, I chose the lap band because I didn't want them to rearrange my guts, you know. But if I can go back with this mindset I have today in 2023 and redo 2011 again, I would have just got the gastric bypass and been done with it. If you finna get weight loss surgery and you want to lose more than 150 pounds, gastric bypass. The sleeve, the lap band ain't going to work at all. You can lose a certain amount of weight when you first get it. And you gonna drop because you're not eating. But after a year, when your body start by eating, 